Hey folks, welcome back. In this video we're going to look at Newton's second law, so let's get started. Now we've already seen Newton's first law in the previous theory video, but now we have Newton's second law, and this is just as important. And Newton's second law states that when the forces acting on an object are unbalanced, the object will accelerate in the direction of the unbalanced force. So although Newton's first law was all to do with balanced forces, Newton's second law is to do with unbalanced forces. It then says, in other words, the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the unbalanced force and inversely proportional to its mass. So what do we mean by directly proportional? Well, remember this just means that as the unbalanced force acting on the object increases, the acceleration of the object is going to increase as well, or vice versa. So if the unbalanced force on the object decreases, the acceleration of it is going to decrease. And I'm just going to show you a quick simulation to help you understand this. So if you have a look at the experiment that's set up here, you can actually carry out an experiment to investigate the relationship between the unbalanced force acting on the object here and acceleration. And you can do this by using something called a linear air track. So this is our linear air track, which lets this trolley with a double mask on it move along it because of the air coming out of the tiny holes. It creates a thin layer of air over it, just like an air hockey table. We then have a light gate and we then have a pulley system with a hanging mass. So what we can do to increase the unbalanced force and then measure the acceleration is we can add more hanging masses onto this holder here. So let's just use the holder first of all and measure the acceleration of the trolley. So let's say we get a value of 0.25 meters per second squared, and then we can add a mass on, and then we can click play again and measure the acceleration. This time we get 0.42 meters per second squared, we can then just keep adding masses, 0.63 meters per second squared, and so on, 0.85 meters per second squared and 1.07 meters per second squared. So you hopefully see that the values of acceleration are increasing as we increase the unbalanced force. Now the reason we can say that adding masses onto the holder is increasing the unbalanced force is because the hanging mass has a weight and weight is a force. So the weight here is our unbalanced force and we can increase the weight by increasing the mass because the gravitational field strength G stays the same on Earth. Now we could plot a graph of acceleration against unbalanced force and show that these values give us a straight line through the origin, i.e. a directly proportional relationship. So that concludes for us that as unbalanced force increases, acceleration increases as well. Going back to the notes now, we also said that acceleration is inversely proportional to its mass. And this is shown from this equation here. So we've got acceleration A is equal to the unbalanced force F divided by the mass m and we can see that the acceleration and unbalanced force there are directly proportional because f is on the top of the fraction and there's no fraction here a is just by itself however we've got m on the bottom and that tells us that a is proportional to one over the mass i.e inversely proportional to the mass so let me just show you another quick simulation to help you understand this if you have a look here, we've got a very similar experimental setup to what we had before, but this time we're investigating the relationship between the acceleration of the trolley and mass. So this time, what we mean by mass is the mass of the trolley itself, not the hanging masses, i.e. the weight. So we're going to keep the unbalanced force, i.e. the weight, the same this time by not adjusting the hanging masses. So we're going to keep that constant. But we are going to measure acceleration of the trolley again using the light gate, and we're going to increase the mass of the trolley each time. So if we click play here, you see we get a value of 1.48 meters per second squared. But if I increase the mass from 200 grams to 400 grams this time, that's like using two trolleys. Then we can click play again and you see it's moving a bit slower. So we get 0.72 meters per second squared. If we increase it again by 200 grams, that's 600 grams and click play. It's moving again even slower, 0.48 meters per second squared. And hopefully you saw there that as we increase the mass of the trolley, the acceleration decreases. So going back to the notes now, we've seen that acceleration is directly proportional to the unbalanced force, but acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass. And what this means in simple terms is as the mass of the object increases, its acceleration will decrease. And hopefully that makes sense because heavier objects are usually harder to move and will therefore not accelerate as much as lighter objects. So if we rearrange this equation a equals f over m for the unbalanced force f, then we get f equals ma. And this is the equation that you'll get on the relationship sheet in the exam. So f is unbalanced force measured in newtons, m is mass measured in kilograms, and a is acceleration measured in meters per second squared, or meters per second per second. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching, if you made it to the end I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video one of these, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.